Tryhards, a force to be reckoned with in almost any game you come across, whether it's Minecraft or Mario, Forza or Fortnite, Call of Duty or Cooking Mama. There's always a group of people that take it a little bit more seriously than the rest, and GT Online is no exception. Do you hate being poor? Do you want to be rich? Like me. If so, head over to Messy Modding Store for all your gaming needs where you can get GTA 5 cash and rank, GTA 5 modded accounts, and many more. And if you have any doubts, look at all these happy customers. I briefly explained Tryhard to my six types of players you find in GTA Online video, but as suggested in that video, I'm going to go a bit more in depth. In most games, you consider a Tryhard to be someone that's really good at the game, abuses most of the game's mechanics, and probably doesn't go outside. A Tryhard in GTA is basically all of that, except they're quite often not very good. From my experience, basically all tryhards all stem from one type of player, which I call the generic tryhard. This would be the stereotypical tryhard. Basically the first thing that springs to mind when you hear that word. Some people will have a different definition to me. Some people think as soon as you put on a bulletproof helmet that makes you a tryhard. Like, really? But this is from my point of view. This starts with a military-esque outfit with the obligatory bulletproof helmet. Technically all helmets are bulletproof, but you know what I mean. They might have a parachute on to act as a backpack, maybe a rebreather or mask, but there aren't any side rules. To complete the look, most tryhards will take a leaf out of some rapper's books and cover themselves in satanic tattoos. They'll then finish themselves off with face paint and white hair, and then the look is completed. If you want to know how tryhards all started to look like this, let me know by dropping a like down below and I'll potentially do a video about the history of GTA tryhards. Now we've got an outfit, but the main part of being a tryhard is how you play. You can have a person dressed like this, but if they go around mining cars and minding their own business, then they're hardly a tryhard. That's why it's important not to judge a book by its cover. Anyway, these players will most likely use first person sniper strafing, or wiggling, and partake in a little bit of what we call in the business, e rowing. E rowing is a funny concept, especially to the uninitiated. Oh, baby, Ohio. Kill On the outside, it looks like a battle with depression, and well, that probably is part of it. E rowing is primarily used to stop other players from being able to kill them because they'd rather do it themselves. The term comes from choosing the easy way out, but now it just describes any form of self-murder. Because Rockstar doesn't punish this behaviour, it's used all the time. The different types of tryhards will kill themselves for different reasons, but the generic tryhard will most likely do it just so they don't die to other players. These players yearn for fights in and around Los Santos, and you'll struggle to find them doing anything else. You can catch them using a mix of ground and vehicular combat, but when they start to lose, they'll start to play increasingly dirtier, with tactics like off the radar and maybe even the autocannon. Hey, GG's bro! Good fight, man! You might notice these guys also have a limited vocabulary. They regurgitate the famous L's followed by whatever the score might be in an attempt to make you mad, which is ironic because they'll be fuming if you did that to them. If you say anything back to them, they might tell you to stop crying, sit down. They might say their KD is better, ask why you're mad, and you can't forget the I'm up forever up. In the unlikely scenario that they're actually up on you in free mode and you send them a message telling them that they're playing like a bitch, expect them to reply by saying, free mode no rules, which is ironic because if you end up beating them in free mode, they'll often ask you for a 1v1 with rules, and if you don't accept, they'll say you're ducking or scared. Never expect these guys to say GG after a fight. Anyway, just like the previous video, I'm going to be ranking these tryhards, but with a different extremely high tech and thorough ranking scheme. I'll assess the player's skill, toxicity, cringiness, predictability, and finally, how happy that player properly is. As this is the generic stereotypical tryhard, their skill is pretty average, they're a little bit toxic, kinda cringe, kinda predictable, and not really that happy. They're basically smack bang in the middle of every single category. But let's get away from the generic tryhard and move on to what I call the wannabe tryhard. For the wannabe tryhard, the clue is in the name. For some reason, they look up to GTA tryhards and try to copy what they do and how they play without knowing the reasons behind the things that they do. But when does this game get fucking good? They've probably just learned how to wiggle snipe, but only do it because tryhards do it and don't know how to do it effectively. They'll often pick up the wrong gun for the job and have a hard on for anything that explodes. You can catch them spamming RPGs that end up going nowhere near you, but most of the guns would have been more effective. You'll also catch them blowing themselves up a lot, and usually for what seems like no reason. A good example of a person becoming a wannabe tryhard is this guy. I made a video on him in the past, and he's starting to make use of tryhard tactics to hide his lack of skill. The video is definitely worth a watch as it shows exactly what I'm on about. My theory is that these players aren't that good at conventional shooter games, so move over to GTA, where it's a lot easier to hide the fact that they're not very good. Because they only really fight bad players that don't understand how to counter even the most basic tryhard strategies, they have a false sense of confidence that doesn't match their actual skills. I'm gonna knock out Austin because I'm an actual fighter. Exactly! 
This creates situations where they can get angry when they're losing and call you out for cheating because, for some reason, they think that no one can be better than them. Now you can often spot these guys by their outfits. They'll look similar to tryhard outfits, but a few things will be off. It's like someone described a tryhard to them over the phone and this is what they came up with. They love the panda face paint and dreadlocks, which are both things that you'll only really see wannabes use. The rebreather is also quite popular, but the whole outfit just doesn't seem to go together very well. For example, here's an outfit I found in free mode. It's just kinda ugly. In summary, a wannabe tryhard wants to have the intimidating appearance of a real tryhard, but doesn't have any skill to back it up. They focus more on their image than their performance, but miss out on the nuances that real tryhards have as they don't have enough of an understanding of the game. Anyway, let's start ranking them. Their skill is obviously going to be very low, as they're all about the looks. They can be quite toxic, especially when you're beating them, because they worship tryhards, they're one of the cringiest players you can meet. However, there is quite a variety of wannabes, meaning they are only slightly predictable. Finally, their happiness is quite low, because when you always want to try and be someone else, you can't be that happy. Next up, we have the OG tryhard. The OG tryhard is someone that's been playing the game since the early days of tryharding. They missed the days where BST wasn't an issue, before CEOs and VIPs, and where the game was a lot simpler. This was when YouTubers like Reconcile Me were gaining popularity, teaching the community tactics to help them win fights. Speaking of Reconcile, he influenced most of the tryhard community in how they look, showcasing inventive and often colourful outfits that made you stand out in Los Santos. The OG tryhard will often use these outfits as inspiration. While I've called them an OG tryhard, they're not really proper tryhards. They'll predominantly use tactics from the 2015 2016 era. They might do some third person sniping to showcase their skill, use ARs in close range gunfights, and maybe try to use RPGs to take down jets. I'm just a nigga with a rocket launcher. They don't really care about the score to the extent that other players do, and play this game to try and get nice kills. Yeah! When they encounter more serious tryhards, their playstyle makes these guys look pathetic, as they'll be using tactics like BST, suicide in, and various vehicles, while the OG tryhard doesn't need to use any of them. Embarrassing! You'll find a lot of this in my free mode videos. I only really use the sniper rifle to win fights and make other tryhards look desperate. Don't say it. Finally, let's start to rank them. The skill for the OG tryhard is among the highest of all tryhards. They rely solely on their skill to win fights instead of resorting to cheap methods. They are also some of the chillest people you'll meet, so have a low score for both toxicity and cringiness. They can be quite predictable, but not all OG tryhards will use the same tactics. Finally, I consider them to be relatively happy, as they don't take the game too seriously. There seems to be a strong correlation between how serious you take the game and how happy you are. Anyway, let's move on to the next type of tryhard. They're pretty similar to the OG tryhard, but I call them the PvPer. The PvPer is one of the most oppressed players in GTA Online. They get dragged down into the same category as tryhards, which is kind of ironic because they're in this video, but I just want to do them justice. Here's what one has to say. I am so tired. I don't want to be associated with the villain. The low-life tryhards that play like f***ing pussies. Okay, I don't really know what that was, I was just messing around. But yeah, these PvP players get associated with tryhards when there's some stark differences. The reason people mistake these guys for tryhards is they're almost indistinguishable. They usually dress the same as tryhards, use similar tactics and strategies, but that isn't what makes a tryhard a tryhard, at least in my opinion. The main difference is the reason for fighting other people. The PvP player will engage in fights that are meaningful, where the other player is willing to fight back and offer a challenge. They don't want to waste their time fighting bad players that won't help them get any better, with the exception of wiping the smirk off a smug wannabe's face. Yeah, some of the other tryhards only really fight other tryhards, but you'll rarely find a PvPer that isn't in a pointless battle. The PvPer uses tactics that are appropriate for the fight at hand. If they're fighting a sniper at beach, they're unlikely to pull out under presser just for some easy kills. They usually use strategies the other player uses to make sure the fight is somewhat fair. If the other player starts using BST, they will. If the other player starts using off the radar, they will. If the other player invades another country, they will. Now most tryhards will think this is stupid because all they care about is score and, and, what was the score and they can't create a big score difference without using stupid tactics but the PvPer would rather the better player win with the outcome more representative of skill level. PvPers are some of the best players because they care about improvement. They often end up honing their skills in specific categories such as the sniper. <laughs> They usually sit at the beach or LSI, which I popularised, and 1v1 constantly just to try and prove their aim. You've also got the RNG. These guys specialise in AR gunplay, usually in closed maps, to also improve their aim and movement. I can't lie, it's kind of a dead community now, but it's a good example of how being really skilled doesn't make you a tryhard. You could even probably include the base players in this category, because even though they're constantly suicided, they play by set rules, and that's the main thing. 
A PvPer likes to play by rules that either they or other people create. I would consider myself a PvPer and I have the following rules. One, I don't fight people that don't want to fight back. And two, I don't want to play more desperate than the opponent is playing. In fact, most of the popular PvP YouTubers would fall under this category and follow similar rules. People like you vs Pro, Met Pro, and even Reconcile who I mentioned earlier. Anyway, let's rank. These players are usually pretty good, so their skill is high. They're not very toxic, as they only go against people that want to fight back, so you're not likely to get griefed by them. They also don't really care about their score, which means you're not really going to receive any hate messages from them, which also makes them not that cringe. They're quite predictable, as they only really fight other players, and I'd like to say their happiness is relatively high, mainly because they don't care about the score. But next up, we've got to talk about the griefer. <laughs> While often put in a different category to tryhards, they're similar enough that they belong in this video. Now, I want you guys to stop for a second. Take a moment and think about the things that you do for fun. Maybe you enjoy exploring nature, having a laugh with friends, going for a drive, whatever it is, notice how you, hopefully, didn't say beating up old people at the shop. Not only is it illegal, but what's the point? They just want to go about their day unbothered and you don't gain anything from it. For most people, it'd be a stupid thing to do, but not for the griefer. They like to prey on the more vulnerable, the ones that can't or don't know how to fight back, with the sole purpose of ruining their fun. You know that one kid that no one liked that would just kick your football away as far as possible when you're just trying to enjoy yourselves? The kid that also doesn't have anyone to play with? Yeah, that's the griefer. With the addition of free mode missions, griefers have evolved from just ruining car meets to stopping any attempt anyone has of trying to make any money at all. Or at least they try. You got an ass off for fuck's sake. The thing is, Rockstar actively promotes griefing, because if making money was too easy, they wouldn't make any money from shark cards. This is one of the main defences griefers use for going after cargo of the sort, which is fair enough, except they go about it in such a cancerous way, where they use overpowered vehicles and glitches so that the person trying to actually make money doesn't stand a chance. You'll notice that some players will hide behind the idea that it's just trolling, when actually they're just being dicks. Like no, using god mode or off the radar glitches to ruin someone's fun isn't trolling grow up. Anyway, should they encounter a person that actually knows what they're doing, oh my god, they'll panic and try all the little tricks they know just so that they won't die. One of their favourites is heist warping, which is so incredibly overpowered, I don't know why Rockstar hasn't done anything about it yet. Bruh. Like Isaac Newton's third law states, every reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. And that's where the anti-griever comes in. But Tom, 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 you've not even done the ranking of the griefer yet. That's because the anti-griefer is actually a griefer. Yeah, I didn't misspeak. Let me explain. Because these anti-griefers appoint themselves to the police of GT Online, they think that they're the judge, jury, and executioner of all combat that goes on. This can sometimes be good where they might grief the griefers that are griefing in the game and actually help people in the lobby in the process. Or sometimes it can be bad, where they might see a fight going on, make an incorrect assumption on who is griefing who, and end up picking on an innocent player who is actually just defending themselves. But hey, at least these guys do it in good faith, and the griefing they usually do actually benefits the lobby. The difference between the griefer and the anti-griefer though is usually their skill. I actually went against a griefer crew in this video here, and you'll be able to see they're useless at almost every aspect of the game, except for being a nuisance. But for the purpose of ranking, I'll just discuss the actual griefers. We'll ignore the nuance that is the anti-griefer. First up we got the skill. It's relatively low, but it's not complete zero because they somewhat know what they're doing. It's just a shame that they demonstrate that skill on low levels and people that are just trying to do work. For that reason they have a high score for toxicity, and they're possibly the most toxic type of players you can encounter in the game. Unsurprisingly they're also really cringe, mainly because of how desperate they are for attention. They're also really predictable because the only reason they load into GT Online is to grief. And finally, unsurprisingly, their happiness is quite low. You can't be that happy if the only way you can gain a mere morsel of happiness is by ruining other people's fun. But next up, we're going one step up to the exploiters.
You know how Rockstar adds new things to the game for everyone to play with and enjoy? They also accidentally add new glitches. Now sometimes they're harmless, but sometimes they can allow players to be in god mode, permanently off the radar, have invisible outfits, or even a glitch to throw sticky bombs from your RC car. And you'll never guess who's came back, it's that annoying desperate barcode from before. From where? What? How? What? But using these glitches against Rockstar's terms of service, right? Well, yes, and most people follow these rules, but the exploiter likes to use the mindset that it's in the game to be used. Usually, that only applies to stuff like jets, tanks, deluxe hoes, whatever, but oh not for these God, guys. Oh, hell. Good luck playing a jit against these guys because they'll use any trick in the book they have to make sure they don't get killed, and to make sure that you do. The toxic playstyle of the scorecard being the only way to determine who's better is one of the main reasons this type of player thrives. Over time, the tryhard community has come to be obsessed with the scores between players and don't understand that getting orbs cannon while you're AFK doesn't actually mean you've lost. Instead, that means you've been caught lacking and you should always be on your A game about everything that's happening in the lobby to make sure that doesn't happen. When these types of players fight each other, that's a general consensus. The scorecard is the defining factor and you need to be aware of all possible glitches to make sure you aren't caught out by anything. If players want to play like this against like-minded individuals, that's completely fair. It's just a shame when this playstyle gets dragged onto other players like me who don't want to fight someone that's glitching their way to get kills. Over the time, some of these guys will just rely on glitches and will straight up leave the sessions if you manage to get them out of it. That's how scared they've become. Let's get on to ranking. Unsurprisingly they have a low score for skill because they wouldn't need to resort to glitches if they were actually good. Obviously their toxicity is high because they like to think they're good when they kill you using these glitches. And yeah, their cringiness is even higher. Their predictability is somewhat in the middle because you never really know what they're going to do and what glitches they're going to pull out. And then their happiness is sort of in the middle as well because, I don't know, I just don't think they'll be as butthurt as some of the other players. One step up from the exploiters, however, is the modders. Fortunately for most people, these guys are only on PC for now, but they're usually two types of tryhard modder. The subtle cheater, and the guy that just says fuck you. First off, the subtle cheater will use tricks like aimbot and triggerbot, and now like they just have a lot of hours in the game and naturally good. Okay, I'm gonna go script and quickly have a rant right now. Click to the time on the screen uh, to skip it, but as you can see in this clip, I'm fighting two people, and one of them just doesn't miss shots at all. Not the wolfy guy, the other guy. And you'll see like you'll see some of my videos, and you see like sometimes I go on kill streaks where I don't miss any shots, but it doesn't usually last more than like five kills at most. But this hazy guy who I was fighting, didn't miss a single shot on me. That's basically impossible. Even if you're the best sniper in the world, you still miss shots. And the most annoying part is, I got in voice chat with him, and he was saying, oh no, I just have a lot of hours in the game. I can't believe you're telling, I can't believe you're saying that I'm aimbotting, when it's literally so blatantly obvious. You'll see in the full video if I ever get around to making it. But I hate these guys. They, they try and make you act like you're stupid, even though they know themselves that they're modding. It's so annoying. They might use damage mods and say, oh, well, it's just BST when they don't even have BST and aren't in a position to drop it. They might use ESP to find out where you are when you go off radar and say, oh, I can just hear your footsteps or, oh, well, it's just thermal helmet. They might also use a mod menu to join your session and say, oh, it's just a coincidence I joined your session for the sixth time in a row. You might be noticing a pattern here. They'll use mods that are quite hard to prove unless you see their point of view. Sometimes they'll slip up and insta-kill you when you have BST and body armour, something that's impossible. But when you call them out on it, they try and say, oh, you're just stupid and they're using some sort of special ammo or whatever. No matter what you say to try and prove that they are modding, they'll never admit it, which is infuriating. These guys also never seem to record their gameplay, so even if you ask for them to prove that they're not modding, they won't, because they can't. Anyway, if you end up beating these guys and they don't like it, watch them crash your game, kick you from the session, even put you in bad sport. They're usually very salty. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> The other type of mod is the guy that just doesn't care if you think they're modding. At first they might Rockstar ID join you, auto can you and say it else. And you'd be like, oh that's annoying, I get a kill some other way. And then when you do try and kill them, you find out they're in god mode and they use all the glitches known to man. Okay, um, it turns out Rockstar games can't make a game properly. Yeah, there's no hope for these guys. Let's start ranking. I put the skills at lowest because you can't be good if you rely on cheats. Now while the toxicity for the normal modder might not be that high, it is for the tryhard modder, with one of the main reasons being that they just gaslight you and call you stupid when you call them out for it. You probably guess why their cringiness is high, but you might be surprised that their predictability is actually quite low. This is because you're never sure which type of modder you're going to bump into. Lastly, if ranking their happiness as being quite high, 
and that's because they've not really got anything to be mad about other than the fact that they're not actually that good, but I don't think they care. Now there's a lot of categories in this video and maybe some that you can think of that I've missed. Maybe a potential for part two, but my final category for this video is going to be the ultimate tryhard. These players are the masters of PvP in GTA Online. They know and abuse any feature they can, from killing players that are interiors to simply using a female character because that's a smaller hitbox. Their main goal is to kill players without getting killed themselves. You may think that's the goal of all tryhards, and while that's probably correct, none of them take it to such an extreme level as these guys. Their mentality is that any player in the lobby could be another tryhard that's out to get them. They take the score in the game so seriously that they're not willing to risk anything when in an open lobby. Now before the Alter Cam was introduced, the level of tryhard in PvP was ridiculously high. The players that had the best aim, could dogfight the best, had the best map knowledge and positioning, they would be the ones that won. Oh, actually, I think I know where this might be. A good example would be Stain United 2. While he doesn't play GT Online anymore, he was probably one of the best tryhards. He used creative methods to kill players that would take countless hours to master, and his arsenal of tricks was endless. Not only that, but he had incredibly precise aim and fast reactions. All of this combined made him difficult to kill and easy for you to be killed by. Back in the day, crews of these types of tryhards would battle it out, trying to compete and determine who's better. And when both sides agreed to play like this, it created some great content. The polar opposite is the wannabe tryhard, who wannos a poor randomer that didn't even know he was a target. So you might be thinking the ultimate tryhard is just a tryhard that's actually good. Well, yeah, pretty much. But to really understand what I'm on about, we'll pit them against players and their strategies. First up, there's BST. Now, BST is pointless if the other person uses it back, and if the ultimate tryhard has better aim than you, then you're losing. So what if you just suicide loop so you can't be killed? Well, that's tough, because the ultimate tryhard has memorised all the spawns and will likely do a spawn kick. Oh, I kicked him. This is the art of spawn rockets and the grenades at various spawn locations to explode the player when they spawn in. Should they have spawn protection, the explosion will shoot them up in the air, making them incapacitated while they wait to stand up again, usually killing you in the process. So what if you use a jet? Well, they're already probably better at dogfighting than you. What about off radar? Well, they can also go off radar, and they'll sit on a roof with thermal to spot you, or just wait for you to reappear while in their apartment. So what if I wait in an apartment hangar or facility? Well, they know the location so they can shoot you out. Well, it's basically patched now. But what if you're a better sniper? Well, they'll spawn Ewo shoot until they get you, before spawn protection disappears. What if you're impassive? Eject kill. What if you're impassive in a place that's tough to reach? Eject kill in style. But what about passive and in your apartment? Well, you got them there. But the ultimate tryhard basically has a counter for anything and knows what to do in any situation. As GTA tryhard and evolved to be more and more about the score, players will constantly evolve until the orbital cannon came in. There's a brief period of foam where you could be sniped out of your facility, but after that, most score tryharding now consists of orbital cannon people and never leaving your facility. That's why there's hardly any of these players left. That and RC cars, where players are basically immune to dying while still being able to kill. So yeah, unfortunately Rockstar's kind of killed off these players, where being the best isn't worth it anymore, at least in being a score warrior. The players that are left have now changed into anti-griefers like Metal Shimmer, U vs Pro, which is arguably better for the community. Also, quick side note, have you noticed that all the score warriors, good or bad, seem to always be fake depressed? They'll have cringy quotes in their profile, and cringy sad profile pics, and pretend they're quitting the game every two weeks to try and get some attention from e-girls. I don't know, just something I noticed. But yeah, overall, the ultimate tryhard is a tryhard who cares about the score a lot, but at least they're actually good at the game, so it's not that cringe. Speaking of, let's rank. Now, even though you might not like how they play the game, you've got to admit they've got a lot of skill. I put the toxicity slap bang in the middle because they can be really, really toxic towards the true tryhards, but they're pretty chill when against just normal people. You might expect their cringe level to be really high because they care about the game so much, but it's actually quite low because they put in the time and effort to get good, whereas some of the other players just don't. Predictability is quite high because you always know they're prepared for whatever you throw at them. Finally, happiness. This was difficult because they will always get joy from winning fights, but the way that Rockstar's changed the game in recent years has just ruined the fun for them. So that's it. Even though I segregated the types of trials into categories, you should know that they aren't solid boundaries. Players can be a mix, like me who's in between a PvP or OG tryhard, maybe a few others, and there are definitely some categories that I missed out. The GT Online experience is truly one of a kind when it comes to PvP, thanks to being able to join the store people, the crews, and the countless methods for killing. I hope you enjoyed this video, keep the discussions down below, and that's about it. See ya.